Hello and welcome into the Respect My Decision podcast. I am Greg Smith, Rivals National Recruiting Analyst in the Midwest, and I am joined this week by a very special guest, Richie O'Leary of HappyValleyInsider.com, the publisher over there, to talk all things Penn State. It has been an interesting uh, summer, to say the least, for Penn State. But first things first, before we get into that, Richie, how are you doing, man? Thanks for being on. Yeah, I'm good. I'm eager to talk some Penn State football. I know it hasn't been the greatest uh, recent couple weeks for uh, the Nittany Lions, but um, they do still have a top 10 class, so... Yeah, I mean, and that's that's kind of interesting in itself, right? Because you sometimes it's easy to forget that, right? Um, mm-hmm. Because they do currently have the number nine class uh, in the country uh, per rivals, but it does feel like the sky is falling right now. So I guess, is that fan base sentiment correct that the sky is falling? And what are kind of your thoughts on what's been happening this summer? Yeah, I'd say um, it's partially correct. Uh, like, like I just said before, they do still have a top 10 class, number nine in the country. 22 commits. Um, I think six of them are in the top uh, rivals 250. So, I mean, they're still getting some really solid kids. Uh, But end of the day, there's a lot of misses this cycle. This is probably the most misses they've ever had. And I know a lot of people like to blame NIL, and you could probably blame it for about 50 to 60% of those misses. But there's also some in-state kids that they're just really struggling to get. And it's, it's amazing because some of these kids were considered Penn State leans for six seven even like 12 months now right. and they, they call penn state their dream offer they get the offer and then they go elsewhere so it's just a it's a weird uh, recruiting cycle this year between them just not being able to land the kids and then just not even getting these kids to campus either like some a lot of these in-state kids are just kind of like hey i want out i want to go out of state and it's been tough but like i said partially nil related partially recruiting related on penn state's part yeah, and I think that the, the NIL portion of this, for as it relates to Penn State, has been such a hot topic. And I think mm-hmm. that it's it's interesting just kind of looking at it from like a ten thousand foot view. You like, I feel like James Franklin is one of the coaches that I've heard from publicly the most mm-hmm. about NIL and the struggles in the program. So it is, I think, it's easy for people to kind of gravitate towards that and glob onto that. But I do, on the other hand, think that you're correct in that it's. It's a part of the equation, but I don't know if it's the whole thing, if it's not just that Penn State is losing these recruitments like at the last minute and they're having a couple of those, but it's also some that are, like you said, guys aren't even making it to campus. So I think that there's an even maybe an even bigger disconnect um, as it comes to what Penn State is doing in this particular cycle. Like you said, a lot more misses um, than they're Mm -hmm. used to having. But I guess of, of, of I guess all of those misses and the things that have happened, I guess which one is the one? to you that kind of you're like oh that one really hurt um i'd have to go with lex cyrus uh susquehanna t- township in pennsylvania long time he's one of those guys i just mentioned he was a long time penn state lean uh we've heard so many good things about penn state he's been to penn state i want to say f- 15 times um unofficially mm-hmm. and then of course the official visit in may uh but yeah no he's just he was gonna go to penn state it sounded like he even came back to campus after taking the two officials that he did to penn state and south carolina came back at the end of June for the seven on seven camp and everyone thought that was it locked up. And then all of a sudden South Carolina makes another push and they end up landing him. Um, now he's, he's not a four star kid. He's not a top two fifty kid. I think he has the pen- potential to be. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, this is a kid that is a top 12 kid in state and a down the road, central PA kid. These are kids that Penn state's never lost before in their lifetime. And now all of a sudden they're losing them. Like it's, it's kind of insane. Yeah, that's that's a wild one to have that many uh, like unofficial visits to mm-hmm. get the, like I can think of which part of that is more concerning the part that you had all <laughs> of the unofficial visits yeah. and then yes and he's in state and you still lose that one or he takes the official comes back after the official and you still end up losing mm-hmm. that one that is that stuff that you just don't ever see like that combination of things for a state school the in, for the in state school that is a good program like you just <laughs> you just don't ever see that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that that's definitely one that will kind of when we're looking back on the cycle and we're kind of dissecting <laughs> what happened with Penn State, we're going to be talking about that one again um, and not for good reasons. But I think the one that that sticks out to me is Taz Williams. And it, it's a recent one. Okay. And this is one that to me and, it, and again, it's it's when you look at to me look at Penn State and kind of what they need and what, you know, they have kind of struggled with here recently on the field. It's those playmakers on the outside um, mm-hmm. and especially as they transition with the 
new offensive coordinator, you're thinking, okay, that's going to change. They're going to be able to land a bunch of those playmakers. And then to have, and Taz Williams is a four-star kid that I really like. I think that he's a very good player and will be a productive college football player. And mm-hmm. to have him, to say he was a Penn State lean is probably mm-hmm. underselling it. Um, yeah. I go as far as to say he was a Penn State uh, silent commit. Um, and then to have him then kind of switch things up last minute um, and, and commit to Baylor um, is a real gut punch considering kind of the behind the scenes things that were going on and mm-hmm. then the position of need, in my opinion, that Penn State really needs to kind of turn the tide on kind of landing guys like that. I think that one was really difficult. Yeah, no, that one was a little gut punching for Penn State. Um, he was, like you said, he was a silent commit at one point to Penn State. He was ready to go. Pittsburgh uh, native, grew up in Pittsburgh. I don't think he moved out to Texas till I think it was like middle school. Yeah. Um, but after it seemed like Penn State was going to win this one all the way. And then I think it was, what, the 12th hour? And all of a sudden, I'm getting texts, I'm getting phone calls, and it's like, <laughs> hey, man, he's, he's going to Baylor. He's going to Baylor. I'm like, what? What's, what happened? I like, explained right. it. Um, now this one you might be able to blame a little NIL related and yeah, I would say this one, yeah. that, that shouldn't be too crazy because we saw Dave Aranda come out at uh, big 12 mm-hmm. media days and say, we're paying players <laughs> and that's right. how we're getting, right. that's how we're getting these guys. So it's really not that crazy, but, uh, end of the day, it's, it does, uh, it's another guy that they, they lost. So that's two wide receivers this cycle. And I could probably name two more if I really wanted to They wide receiver recruiting has been a struggle. And like I said, partially NIL related, but you have to also kind of put a little bit of blame on the wide receivers coach and the offense in general. Um, right. It's just been a it hasn't been a great Penn State offense over the past couple of years. They re, they are able to run the ball and they're run uh, old school Big Ten uh, smash smash your mouth football, but they can't throw the ball. I mean, they've had a couple guys here and there, like Jahan Dotson, they had, and he's looked really good in the league, but he's hasn't really didn't do much at Penn State. Like he had about right. one year that was pretty good, but other than that, it's just been a struggle to get the pass game going at Penn State, and now you're seeing the uh, results of it on the recruiting trail. Yeah, and I do think that that's an important point. I don't think that, you know, like we, we've said before, it is sometimes, you know, there is one thing, in this case, NIL, that maybe had a more dominant effect on the recruitment, but it is always, mm-hmm. to me, a little bit of a combination of things, right? And I think that, like, what you just said is really important. And I think that kind of looking at kind of the recent history of Penn State in the passing game, whether it's mm-hmm. quarterback play, whether it's wide receivers, what, development, whether or not it's the wide receiver coach, the type of offense, like, that's a lot of different stuff kind of mixed in there and i think sometimes you forget that even though there is excitement around you know being able to change up the offense some and have new coordinator kids still want to see proof of concept right like this is a situation where you can tell them all day like james franklin can tell these guys like hey yeah it's going to be different and we're going to open things up or you know it's not going to be the same old smash mouth you know penn state football but Mm -hmm. at the same time a kid may say hey i've seen that at other places like i know baylor is going to be a little bit more wide open um than your offense has been like and that ends up being a factor too yeah, I mean, 100%. And that's the reason why they're running back recruiting so good. It's right. They're going to run the ball, what, 50 times a game? Um, and that's why they have three four star, two four-stars and a highly ranked three-star in this class. They had two four-stars in the previous cycle. They had two four-stars in the previous cycle before that, and Katron Allen and Nick Singleton, who are basically splitting carries at this point right. because they run the ball so much. Um, but, yeah, and that's that just goes to speak on uh, how, how they're recruiting on the recruiting trail right now. Wide receiver recruiting struggles on, on the field, wide receiver recruiting struggles off the field now. Yeah, that's a great point about the running backs is that it's not all glass half empty. Like you do yeah. the other side of that is they are cashing in on the success mm-hmm. on the ground. Um, and one of the things though, too, and we we almost touched on it briefly too, is that you know, in-state recruiting this year in, in Pennsylvania yeah. has just been it, it's been bad, um, to say the least, nice. but it's a, it's a really good year for in-state talent in Pennsylvania. I think there are 11, we have 11 total four stars um, in the state of the top 10 players right now. Penn mm-hmm. State has three of the 10 committed. Okay. I believe that the top couple are, are going elsewhere. Um, mm-hmm. Michael Carroll, um, who actually just transferred to IMG or just announced his transfer to IMG, yeah. and then Matt Zoller is going to Missouri. So mm-hmm. what, where's the disconnect, in your opinion, between, you know, you want to see, and I know this, every school wants to be able to just dominate and have 10 out of 10 in their state. It doesn't happen that way, but you at least want to go 50%, right? So yeah. be at about 30, what's kind of the disconnect right now that you see between Penn State and kind of landing those in-state targets? Um, there's a couple things. Um, I think NIL, of course, is going to play a factor here. Um, I can go through about three or four of these guys and say, like, yeah, they definitely got a, a significant bag promised or whatever, however it works any, nowadays. Um, right. 
but, and it just happens. It is what it is. You're going to lose some of those guys now with NIL. You look at every other state, it's it's kind of the same thing for the most mm-hmm. part. For programs around Penn State's level, you go down to, uh, I'm saying go down to like the state of Georgia even. They're, they're losing mm-hmm. kids out of the state of Georgia. And you're just able to recruit everywhere now because it's so easy with social media, with Huddle and all that other stuff um, to recruit nationally. Um, and then with the conferences changing, now you're really recruiting wherever right. you want pretty much. Yeah. Um, especially because the Big Ten is coast to coast. Like you see their top commit right now is a California cornerback. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> there nice, you go. Yeah. But um, there is some disconnect between the staff and some of these guys. Um, like Anthony Saka, his dad played at Penn State. Uh, Michael Carroll, his dad played at Penn State. Neither one of them is going to Penn State. Tough, um, yeah. Michael Carroll is one of the guys I was talking about before that I referenced saying, hey, like he told me at Rivals Camp in 2023, if I get a Penn State offer, that's my dream school. My dad went there. He played there. Uh, all four years it was great like i need that offer and uh, again turn it got the offer turned into a penn state lean and all of a sudden it just completely ended up elsewhere um i think they just got to do a better job of selling the in-state kids a little bit better um especially on the uh eastern side of pennsylvania specifically the philadelphia area they've struggled with saint joe's prep who produces the majority of the top kids every year um they struggle with imhotep charter a little bit now they're getting a little bit better there um, as you can see with Jabri Wallace Coleman, number four in the in the state going to campus. And they're they're pushing to try to flip to hear Mathis from Ohio State as well. Right. Whether it happens or not, that's to be determined. But I think they just got to do a better job of selling these in-state kids that Penn State is the the in-state school. This is the premier school of the Northeast. I know it's not located in the best area because it's in the middle of a valley in Pennsylvania and there's not really <laughs> much there's nothing else really out there. It's just state college and that's it. But I think they have to do a better job of selling, and I think you have to make a run at this playoff. You can't keep flirting with it every year and not making it. Now that there's 12 teams in this playoff, you probably have to go in there, and you probably have to win a game as well. And you're huh. gonna, you might get a home game if you're a top, what, top eight seed, I think it is. Or something right. like that. So, I mean, I think you have to go into this college. You have to make the college football playoff first off. You have to prove at least one of these years that you could beat the top two of Ohio State and Michigan. And then I think that the rest will kind of just follow suit. And that's where you'll get more NIL funding because you're starting to show more promise on the field. And then that's where you'll start getting more kids because you have NIL funding. So it's it's kind of like a, a long-term effect, but you have to win these games. You got to start winning more and more. 10 wins is great, but it's not great when you're losing to the top two of the conference every year. Yeah, that's what it, it really feels like to me. And this happens, like you said, with teams at, at kind of Penn State's level, which I think is the important point mm-hmm. there. Of, and that means to me, teams that are, are good programs, but they can't quite get over that hump. Because yeah. then what happens is, is that it, it becomes almost stale in a way for those in-state kids where they're mm-hmm. like, OK, I know I know exactly what I'm going to get if I go to Penn State. <laughs> you know, if I'm Michael Carroll, I know exactly what I'm going to get if I go there. I'm going to win 10 games. I'm going to go to a few nice bowl games. We're going to have some fun, but we're not going to compete for the national championship because Michigan and Ohio State are going to beat mm-hmm. us and they're going to compete for the national championship. But yeah. if I go down to Bama, I've seen them <laughs> win. Yeah. I've seen Kalen DeBoer and what they've done out at Washington. And now you, I assume what they're going to continue to do at Alabama because all that mm-hmm. guy does is win yeah. um, everywhere he goes. And so you can kind of see how that snowball effect happens. Um, and then you have to be able to just make, you have to be able to make your school and Penn State is tough in this way. It has mm-hmm. to be a little cooler right like it just has to have that factor and it's so hard to quantify that right but you get what I mean when I say it is that it just doesn't feel like when you talk about kind of the location of the school the Mm -hmm. way that kids perceive it the the NIL component which has come up a lot but it is it is true that that part of it it just all kind of adds up until like it doesn't it's like almost the opposite of say like Oregon right of a team that just feels like always feels really cool that is not how Penn State is viewed by prospects and I think all of that between the cool factor and it's kind of the what feels like a limit on the ceiling of the program i think Mm -hmm. really ends up hurting them from going to the next level yeah no i totally agree with you now now, mind you oregon having 25 maybe 30 different uniform combos is always pretty cool (laughs) can't really beat that and penn state's never going to change that but um yeah no it's a tough sell um and i give james franklin credit because he does do a pretty good job he did have a top 10 class a couple cycles Mm -hmm. ago Technically, it's top 10 right now. I don't think it stays that way um, right. just based on the way recruiting works. But um, you got to give him a little bit of credit because he does recruit very well uh, normally. But you, you got to win at the end of the day. And if you're not winning, I, I don't think you're going to get these kids. And and if you don't have NIL on top of that, I mean, 
then you're really screwed. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Now we talked a lot about the guys that they've lost, right? And the guys that are not coming here, mm -hmm. but I want to switch gears on here a little bit here. Who is one guy in this class that you look at him in the class right now, it doesn't matter where he's ranked <laughs> and you say, okay, Penn state fans should be really excited that that guy's in the class. Yeah. Now this is a, an interesting one because there's a lot of four stars to pick from. There's a lot of mm -hmm. highly ranked four stars to pick from. I'm actually going to go with lyric Samuel, who's a little bit lower in the rivals rankings. And okay. I've, I was able to see him about four to five times over the past Last year and just watch him develop more and more um tall lengthy receiver um big time deep ball threat guy um i actually saw him at a seven on seven camp just last month and he just it goes up for the ball high points it perfectly he's really good route runner he's actually a little sneaky in um in terms of going back not to the seven on seven camp but going back to regular season mm -hmm. but it's a little sneaky in the screen game too and he's got some good uh -huh. speed he runs around the four six four a little high in the, the four sixes i should say but uh really good prospect i think he has a lot of potential now, playing in uh, New York obviously isn't going to help him too much, but he does play in the best program in New York, arguably, in Erasmus yeah. Hall. They produced a ton of talent. Um, yeah. they've, they've produced, um, I'm trying to think, the most notable guy is probably Curtis Samuel. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, I think he's a really sneaky prospect. I think they got, got a really good get in him, and they got in on him early. This, he also won wide receiver camp at the Under Armour uh, New Jersey camp uh, back yeah. in April, May, whatever it was. Uh, but this is just a really sneaky, good wide receiver, and I know I've, I've kind of – uh hated on him a little bit for their wide receiver recruiting but this one was a really good get really early on and a kid that uh i think could develop into a four star down the line yeah and this is to me exactly what um the penn state needs to do if you're not going to get mm -hmm. those top end four stars you're not in it with those five star wide receivers um even as wide receiver like really explodes it feels like there's so many good wide receivers <laughs> yeah. out there every year but then you need to be able to get guys like this that you know like have that high-end potential that can maybe develop into something really mm -hmm. good or that are just underrated um and maybe in this case because of where they play high school football um and so that's interesting that's a good call out on that one um and i'm gonna yeah. i'm gonna get you out of here on this one richie and i definitely appreciate the time i guess yeah. as, as we kind of spin it forward here i guess what are the what are the needs moving forward for penn state we talked about their top 10 class right now uh mm -hmm. we got quite a few guys in the class some good talent in there but what's what's left out there on the board for positions of need yeah i, I hate to harp on it again but uh, wide receivers what they need yeah. wide receivers they only have two of them right now the ideal number i was told was probably around four to five and that was back yeah. in spring now they're sitting at two still um now they there's a possibility that Braswell Thomas, who's technically listed as a wide receiver right now, could play wide receiver at the next level, but they like a more at safety to start. So we'll see what happens okay. there. Um offensive line, Malachi Goodman, four star out of Paramus Catholic. Uh, I believe he has a top five, it's technically or top six. I forget what it is exactly, but it's more of like a top three, I was told, with USC, Auburn, and Penn State. Okay. He's actually expected to make a decision in the next week or two. Uh, so wait and see what happens there. They're like I said before, they're pushing Ohio State uh, defensive end commits here. Mathis, number one in the state of Pennsylvania, they actually were the only program to host him on an official visit this summer. So you have to think you have at least a shot at the very least. Oh, yeah. um, and that's pretty much it. Now they'll, they'll peek into the linebackers to see what's out there because they did end up losing one in DJ McClary from New Jersey to Rutgers, but um, they do still have two currently, and they seem pretty content there. If someone pops up on the radar a little bit late, they've been very well known, especially if it's like a DMV, a Pennsylvania, New Jersey guy, mm -hmm. like a late riser. They're they're very well known for like going after those kids late mm -hmm. in the process, whether it be uh, the first three games of the season usually or something like midway through the uh, high school seasons. But, yeah, that's pretty much it. So it, it would be wide receiver, one to two of those, an offensive line, maybe a defensive lineman, and maybe a linebacker. Yeah, I think, you know, we talk about like kind of perception and kind of how to flip that, right? Flipping yeah. a kid, no pun intended, from Ohio State, <laughs> who is the number one player in your state, to then, you know, as we talk about these struggles inside the state, that would go mm -hmm. a long way um, to oh, yeah. helping to calm Big the waters. Um, that would really help. I, I'm going to have my eye on that one. Uh, but mm -hmm. make sure that's going to do it for us. Make sure you keep an eye on happyvalleyinsider.com. Check out all the things that Richie and his team have got going on over there for all things Penn State. Make sure you're subscribed over there. Make sure you keep it locked on rivals.com for all the things that are happening nationally. And we will catch you guys next time.